Welcome to the video guys, we got some Brexit updates here, not only relating to the trade deal and fishing, but the SNP once again, trying to butt their nose in where it's not wanted, and the EU using the invasion of the south coast to force the UK government into compromises on the Brexit deal. First, we have the Express reporting on the SNP getting their knickers in a twist because they don't have a say in Brexit negotiations relating to fishing or anything, which it seems is a good idea because the second Express article we will also take a look at is reporting that David Frost, our chief negotiator, has stuck to his guns on post-Brexit fishing, hopefully delivering what the people voted for in that regard, Time will tell, of course. Now, it could be, in response to that, that the EU has decided it will reject us returning criminals they let cross the channel. Which is not surprising, but is fine with me, providing the government grows a pair and returns all criminals to their country of origin instantly. The Labour Party claims there is a hostile environment here for migrants, so the government might as well do what they are accused of doing. They should legally be able to do it, as my video covered yesterday about the UN report stating the blindingly obvious. These are not refugees, they are illegal, economic migrants with no right to be in the EU, let alone the UK, so sending them straight back should be easy. Obviously, Pretty Patel says she will be changing the law and sending the rabid leftist Labour-loving lawyers into shit fits, but that is still hot air until it actually happens, if it ever happens, as you all know. Now, the first Express article we will take a quick look at is on the SNP and their non-stop anti-Brexit shit fits, as I said. Brexit row Iran between number 10 and Scotland as SNP ramps up pressure on fishing talks. A deep row erupted last night over high-level talks on fishing rights after Brexit with Westminster snubbing requests by senior Scottish ministers to take part in discussions. Scotland's Rural Economy Secretary said he has seen repeated requests from the Scottish Government to participate in international negotiations on fishing denied. Part of the controversy surrounds the UK Government's Fisheries Bill, which creates the powers for the UK to operate as an independent coastal state and manage its fish stocks sustainably outside the EU is currently in process. The bill, which finished its passage through Parliament on July 1st, ends current automatic rights for EU vessels to fish in British waters. If access to UK waters for foreign vessels is negotiated, Westminster says the bill will also enable the Fisheries Administration to ensure that foreign vessels follow the same rules as UK vessels, which, I don't know about you, kind of says to me that the SNP really don't need to be involved in it, it's something for the UK government, not the puppet government up in Scotland. Of course, we know why they're bitching and moaning about it, because their masters over in the EU have told them to do it and want to continue taking all of our fish. And in a lot of cases, this is Scotland's fish, you know, the fishermen up in Scotland who are losing out on countless amounts of money because she'd rather give it to the European Union. Speaking to Holyrood's Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee yesterday, Mr Ewing warned the UK government denying Holyrood in negotiations would be detrimental. And I really don't see where you're getting that from. In what way would it be detrimental? The UK government is in charge. You are not. You will just be standing there pissing and whining. At the end of the day, as long as the government puts the British fishermen first, that is all that really matters in relation to fishing with Europe and our waters. Of course, the SNP don't really care about the Scottish people. They only care about pushing through their own agendas. He added, we have requested that we be fully involved. Our officials have been to some extent. Oh, so you've been let in, which is more than I would do if I was in charge, but you're still moaning because obviously you want a little bit more so you can fuck it all up, no doubt. He warned the bill would be poorer without our input and added this input of Scottish expertise and knowledge has improved the bill from its original draft. You mean it's improved the bill in your opinion, likely pushing shit that you want. No doubt scrounging money off the rest of the country, which we know is what the SNP is really good at. Scrounging everyone else's money and giving it out for free to every Tom, Dick and Harry they can import in. We are as prepared as we can be for the end of the transition period. Oh, so you now admit that we are ready to leave the European Union and Brexit will be good because that's what it sounds like there. I am confident this bill gives Scottish ministers and the Scottish Parliament the necessary powers and tools to do that in a way that respects devolution. And obviously, devolution has been respected. This is just something that devolution doesn't deal with. This is a UK government problem, not the SNP's. In response, a number 10 spokesman told Express.co.uk last night, we have wholeheartedly committed to maintaining funding for our fishing industry across the UK, with the fisheries bill creating new powers to build a sustainable 
sustainable and profitable sector with a funding scheme for Scotland, because obviously we always need to fund the SNP's lavish spending. They will never be able to fund themselves, which means their independent stream is nothing but a load of old cods wallop. The government has already made an extra £16.5 million available to help the Scottish seafood sector capitalise on leaving the EU, and we will continue working closely with the industry as we become an independent coastal state. You know, Nicola Sturgeon, independent, something you wouldn't know about since you want to be the vassal state of Brussels, as we all know. Obviously, it ends up there with the fisheries minister bigging up the bill. We don't really give a shit about that. She's not going to stand there and say that it's a load of crap, is she? Let's be honest. Now, it may be possible that the SNP are getting a little bit salty because of this article we see here. Or, should I say, the reports that have likely been sent out to many media outlets regarding it that obviously they have got hold of. It headlines, Nothing has changed. Barnier blows top at Brexit stalemate. Frost stands firm on fishing. Which, maybe it was Barnier who contacted the SNP and said, Look, they ain't giving us what we want. You need to start applying pressure from the inside, which I think is something we see over the past few years, especially with the 2017 to 2019 traitorous parliament. Michel Barnier warned time is running out to broker a free trade agreement after talks failed to break months of bitter deadlock. The European Union's chief wanker said the wrangling over the post-Brexit pact remained stuck because of disagreements over access to Britain's fishing grounds and the so-called level playing field. That can never be allowed to happen. The Frenchman said, We have very little time left to conclude the negotiations to ensure an agreement can enter into effect on January 1st, 2021. We still have a few months left to find an agreement, to find an agreement on all issues under discussion to consolidate the text. Yeah, well, you better find the agreement that suits what Brexit is actually about. None of your rules, none of your laws, stick the ECJ up your ass, the European Bank, and the rest of it. We will do a strictly trade negotiation with you, that is all we want. We don't want your mass immigration, we don't want any of the rest of it. And for fuck's sake, learn to keep your boat wankers over in France, we certainly don't want them. Mr Barnier accused the British of refusing to move forward on issues of fundamental importance for the European Union despite the flexibility which we have shown over recent months. You haven't shown flexibility, you're doing things that no other country or group of countries has ever done in a trade negotiation with a free power that you haven't just defeated in war. At the end of the day, as I've said in previous videos, Boris should use the actions of the EU and international law to tear up the withdrawal agreement, wipe shit on it and smother it in the EU's face. Of course, he won't do that, he's weak as piss water as I've said. But if this article's to be believed and Barnier blew his top, that's obviously a good thing. It means the government, and David Frost at least, are actually doing something the people of this country want. To my knowledge, it is literally the only thing they have actually done that they said they would do. Now, maybe the government needs to start being even harder with the EU because of this story we have here. The EU rejects British plan for post-Brexit return of asylum seekers, which is why I said at the beginning of this video we stick them back on planes and send them to where they come from. The UN said a ridiculous amount of these people are not refugees, so it should be very easy to do that. Because, let me tell you, international law does not protect economic migrants who have broke the law and been denied the right to stay in many countries, much like these wankers have been. EU negotiators have rejected a British request for a migration pact that would allow the government to return asylum seekers to other European countries. When the Brexit transition period expires on the 31st of December, the government will lose the right to transfer refugees and migrants to the EU country in which they arrived, a cornerstone of the European asylum asylum system known as the Dublin Agreement. Which, let me tell you, the Dublin Regulation or Dublin Agreement is a complete load of shit anyway, you don't really want to be part of that. Like I said, the government needs to do its own thing and send them straight back to where they're actually from. I'm sick of saying it, at the end of the day, they are not our problem, given the way this year has gone, we got our own problems to sort out, we certainly don't need every Tom, Dick and Harry from halfway around the world, and we never will. The UK government is seeking to replicate the European system outside the bloc, although the Home Office has complained that EU rules are rigid, inflexible and abused by migrants and activist lawyers, which is something that is actually true 
through and makes me wonder why the government wants to stay in it. They need to make something completely different and so do other EU countries because obviously as we know Italy are in the shit also with the exact same thing. Now I'm not going to bother reading through all of this it's just going over a load of old bullshit that we've already covered in previous videos and would make this video something like 20 odd minutes long because it is just endless dribble. At the end of the day I've already said what the government should do in regard to this because the EU are going to keep posturing in order to push Boris Johnson into giving them a better deal in regards to Brexit which cannot be allowed to happen. Hopefully Boris Johnson, the government and the rest of them will actually be strong and start doing something about this but let me tell you now I wouldn't bet your house on it or anything else not even a fiver. It's that bad the government has been that weak over the past few months. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>